Hey Gab Street listeners, today's episode is not usual. I know it's not Wednesday morning, I know it's Saturday at 10 a.m., but today is a collaboration with another podcast in the city, Your Voice First Podcast. Uh, this is an interview in which uh, Patrick Sweetman of Your Voice First actually interviews me, so I hope you enjoy, and we'll see you this Wednesday. You're listening to the Gab Street Podcast, Columbus, Ohio's number one podcast for underground talent. Every week we have new conversations with interesting individuals who contribute to the Columbus economy and its lively culture. You may find just what you're looking for right in your backyard. Let's get right into it. Welcome back to a collaboration between Your Voice First Podcast and Gab Street Podcast. Today we have Corey Leo from the Gab Street Podcast, as well as myself, Pat Sweetman from uh, Your Voice First Podcast. The first question I have for you today, well, I guess before I put out the first question, the intention, um, I did want to bring this up, is connecting Columbus creatives to have a collaboration of the podcasts that are going on in Columbus. I think you and I are both on the same page that podcasts and audio content are very important for the stage of technology and the economy that Columbus is in. So connecting the people who are on podcasts are very important. Um, like you said, there's no competition. It's all collaboration. So without further ado, first question, what is Gab Street Podcast? We've got a lot of people here, no voice technology and artificial intelligence. What the heck is Gab Street? So Gab Street Podcast is the best place to go if you feel like you're living in a city that you can't appreciate, uh, that city specifically being Columbus. There are a lot of people that specifically I grew up around that have been living in Columbus all their lives and they don't feel like they live in a place that's worth living in, that has cultural value. And uh, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, my goal is to let those people know that, and we, we call our fans pedestrians, it's a pedestrian movement. And part of that is uh, you can find people that are just as impressive and just as important culturally walking around on the street in Columbus, Ohio, as you can seeing on the, on, on the big screens from uh, Los Angeles and New York. You know, we, I, we always try to look to places to run away. And I think it's important to understand that uh, you need to appreciate your immediate surroundings as well. So that's the biggest, that's what Gab Street is here to do. I agree with that. And I look at you and I see this 19 year old that's doing some amazing things and I know that you want to be traveling the world. I know that you've <laughs> got to have all these thoughts of like going somewhere else. But I asked you off camera before this, hmm. do you plan on making Columbus a long-term home? I do. And I know that you're, you're running Gab Street. It's got to be a yes. But I know you've got to be thinking there's got to be some cool things in L.A., in Seattle, in China, in all of these different places you could be going. How have you been fitting that into your mental map? This, this like desire to be the young guy that travels out and explores – while also having this podcast and this core belief of, yo, everything that we need is here inside of us in Columbus. It's already here. Like, how, how do you balance that? So um, if you're diving into a pool, you're not going to jump off of a diving board with cracks in it, right? You're not going to jump off of an incomplete diving board. Okay. And by living here for a long time first, before, first of all, I've been to other places visiting right right um to live somewhere else at this point in my formative years because i believe i still am in my formative years <laughs> is to not have a solid foundation to jump off of yet because you're going to hit that water awkwardly you're going to hit it really you're not going to hit it the right way if you're jumping off of a broken diving board so that i by living and understanding columbus as best i possibly can before mm. tackling any other place uh, I want, I want to be able to navigate. I feel like it's a good model to be able to navigate other places as a result of that understanding. Does that make sense? I, I, I hear you. I 100% agree. Never thought of it like that. I've, I've often looked at people and I think, wow, you've really never left Ohio. You <laughs> literally have no idea what's going on outside of here. And I think how, when, when we used to be growing up, or I'm sorry, when we used to be growing up, when we were growing up, how, when we first started to read, we probably had one book that was our first book to read. Hmm. And the only reason we were able to read it is because we memorized every word because our mom said it so many times. <laughs> we told mom, mom, I know how to read this book. 
she knew okay you've just you've memorized every word on the page and you've just memorized it and you're just reciting it you're reciting you're not truly reading my view then is when people leave and they go and explore something new that's when they're truly reading hmm. that's when they're truly putting in all these practices of identifying words identifying sentence structure identifying grammar identifying themes but you just gave me a new piece to that fitting into that okay you really need to understand this first book so you can understand what a sentence looks like so you can understand what a paragraph looks like so you can understand what a theme is because columbus has it all once you understand this book entirely get out and go somewhere else and apply this model elsewhere but if i'm getting you right you do plan on going and taking this model to other places or at least expanding from columbus and what you're doing i would love to foster this style of appreciation for your surroundings in the same vein in other places i personally don't plan on say like let's let's look at another city that you've definitely heard of but maybe don't really know or have much associated with it like let's say lexington lexington kentucky or mm -hmm. something like that yeah um you don't when you hear that name you're like that's a city that's kind of that's kind of the brunt of what you what you think about right and i imagine the people who live there probably feel the same way to a certain extent they hear a lot about new york they hear a lot about la they don't hear much about their city there isn't a joe rogan from lexington kentucky and in interviewing people from lexington kentucky it's so hard to say um mm -hmm. and showing off that it's actually an important place of culture and in reality every city in the united states is an important cultural place so columbus is included in that that doesn't mean it's the only so you know it, i would love to have that attitude just positivity is infectious right all i'm promoting is positivity you have to be positive about where you are. That's that's the best way to improve even your own mental health. So, for there to there could be a Gab Street in every city, basically. That's that's if that answers your question, I would say that's uh, that is my answer. <laughs> I want to take a quick second and congratulate you. Hmm. I heard Gab Street has recently had its first birthday. Yes, that is correct. So you guys you. threw an event as a result of having your first birthday, right? Mm -hmm. Would you mind, for people who weren't there and aren't aware of how dope that event was, <laughs> talk about how you created that birthday celebration for the podcast and who you kind of brought in to collaborate as your team. Okay, so uh, first big shout out is to Joseph Keith, 100%. Um, uh, he is over at uh, Raven's Hood blog, and he is writing a lot about Columbus culture uh, he, so what, what I do is a little more long form. Um, he's taking it and condensing it a bit into some videos and some top 10 kind of content. And, uh, he's also written some, some articles and his, his stuff is mostly uh, focused on music specifically. So, um, he's written a few articles, one of which details, uh, the importance of realizing that, uh, the people closest to you in your, in your personal life are not always going to value your creative projects mm. and that you need to get over that uh in order to succeed and that's that's just a, one example of the genius that he's writing out there um so to get into what he did for the party uh he was the host of that party and uh he, he emceed the whole thing and his performance was wonderful um believe it or not that was his first time and uh <laughs> he told me he was very nervous afterward um i, I think he did a fantastic job but he helped throw that together and he was the person who gave me the energy to believe that we could do it so in january i was thinking to myself oh well february 6th is when the gab street turns a year old i want to celebrate that somehow i have no idea what to do i feel like and i'm not a very celebratory person when it comes to things of my own like if there's if i have a birthday party for myself it's thrown by someone else usually. Mm -hmm. I'm not the kind of person that'll put on my own party. You're selfless. Sure, <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Um, thank you. Uh, Joseph Keith put the, kind of smacked me into some sense into me and saying like, this is something worth celebrating um, and helping me kind of separate the show from myself because the show isn't focused on me. It's not the Corey Leo show, it's Gab Street. I merely facilitate the interactions that are on it. So 
by making that separation, I was like, oh, okay, well, this is something that not only it's we're celebrating something good, but we're bringing people together doing it. So he also was instrumental in getting, eh, you'll get that pun here in a second, in getting the musicians ah, uh, on on the bill. We had eight performers, um, which is fantastic. That's amazing. A few of which have already been interviewed on the show and the rest of which will be interviewed on the show. On the Gab Street. On Gab Street. Yes. Thank you. Um, they'll, they'll be on Gab Street podcast for sure. Um, so he, w he brought those people in. And another person, another group of people to shout out is Revolter Pictures. Uh, they are the film crew for the event, as well as other events that we will be throwing in the future. So look out for that. Uh, it's three guys. It's Alex, Anthony, and Bryn. Uh, I've known them for little, I think it, about a year now. Uh, and they make really funny skits. And they captured the entirety of the party um, and are currently throwing together a recap for it. So I'm very thankful for that. People are going to be able to either relive it or live it even if they weren't there. So I'm excited for that. And so by all those avenues, they knew some people in the film community. Joseph Keith knew people in the music community. The people that were performing on stage, their fans came out to the show. Uh, Everyone that I, that supports the show that I went to high school with came to the show, and they they interacted and made connections. And you'd think a lot of oh, also one more thing, the Discord, Columbus Discord. Uh, I joined that Discord chat. Discord chat. Yes. Interesting. Okay, yeah. continue. Uh, I met some people through there, and I just interviewed Adam Himmel from that. Came out this morning. Um, they have been wonderful and wel welcoming, and they came out and supported as well. And the connections that happened during that party were between such vastly different groups of people that you would not imagine would ever interact and be kind to each other and and give each other things, you know. And uh, here's an example of a good interaction is uh, there were, one of the raffle items at the party was a uh, half off discount for a uh, full Revolter Pictures, you know, edit filming and editing job. Oh, wow, that's major. Yeah. Uh, they do a good job, so it was a pretty good prize. And someone in the audience who registered for it, probably not really knowing what they were getting into, won it. And because they had met and saw uh, Dollar Sign Asia perform, shout out Asia. Shout out Dollar Sign Asia. Oh, yeah. Um, she ended up giving Asia that instead, uh, seeing that it would be in better hands at that point. Oh, wow. Yeah. Asia, if you're listening to this, I hope you're leveraging that Revolter Pictures package <laughs> to the fullest. That's a collaboration that'll go down in history. Oh, yeah. We were talking earlier about this audio only and mm. how Gab Street, when it first started, was only audio. Yes. At what point did you start adding a visual component to the podcast? So I'll give you a little bit of backstory first. Uh, we used to have a co-host that was on every episode named Gage. And he was with the show for about 22 episodes. Uh, and then he quit after that because his schedule got too hectic. And then it's just been, been me since then. But from episode 1 to 13, we were audio only. From 14 through 22, we, were vis we, were, we had a visual component. Gage was the tech guy. I didn't really understand what was going on. He was doing a lot of it for me. Which is sad to admit. And then he left. So I thought, I don't have, I, I need to rebuild what I'm going to do without him first. I need to kind of take a step back. I didn't want too many components that I had to throw together. Mm -hmm. uh, so I eliminated the video portion until about episode 44. Uh, so that was 22 episodes uh, that we had only audio and... Um, the audio, the video coming back has very clearly shown growth, but at the same time, it didn't seem as important to me during the audio only portion because we are still having a bit of growth and I'm not a, I'm not a visual person personally. 
I, I process things very linguistically. You can hear how much I'm talking this guy's head off right now. You know, Love it. I, <laughs> um, I, I write copious notes uh, based on research for each guest beforehand. And, uh, you know, what, the, what's sitting in front of me here is a visual, uh, if I'm allowed to mention, if Please it's not do. a trade secret. Continue. Um, the mind map. <laughs> yes, the mind map. Um, while it is helpful to a lot of people and I like the way it's organized, when I see arrows pointing to different things, it just doesn't register as well as just a long sentence describing the same connection. That's That just ends up working better for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so I had a bunch of visual people telling me, hey, you need to bring this back any way you can. And my excuse was always, well, I don't have enough money for a camera or anything like mm -hmm. that. And I was like, you know what? I need this. I just, like we're using today, I just put on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. And it hey, ended phone. up, hello phone. Uh, it works very well, does it not? It works great. I, I'm, we're yeah. running on the Google Pixel 3a right now. I love it. Yeah, it's. I mean, I have a Galaxy S8 right now, and it it works great. Mm -hmm. um, video is a little grainy. Usually, people don't care about that really. So, well, from my perspective, I run a conversational AI company. We are here to build cool technology, and I'm trying to just capture a clip of space as our rocket ship is flying through it. I don't care how grainy it looks. I'm just trying to capture and send that stuff back to the oh, home planet. Mm. But that's us. You guys are entirely podcast. So I'm very curious of your views on the importance of audio versus video. Because at least on, on the voice first podcast side, a lot of the people that are listening to this are interested in Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. And they're curious of voice only interactions, voice first interactions, and multimodal experiences. So... In your mind right now, is audio king? Where does like audio and visual fall in for you in terms of storytelling and brand presence? Well, obviously, you wouldn't want to watch just a silent video of some of two people sitting there talking, right? Agreed. Uh, so audio is automatically more important to me. If I had to drop one, I would have to drop video 100%. Um, Something I've been told by some of our listeners is that they like listening to our show while they're doing something else, while they're driving to and from work, while they're doing work that they don't have to hear other things for. So that aspect is important and having the choice to either sit there and pay attention fully to a video with audio or to be able to just play it in the background and still pick things up here and there, you know. I won't be offended if you don't hear every single word. It's all right. Uh, or if I, you're listening at double speed. Yeah, exactly. Like, how many people have you had come up to you and be like, yo, you sound fire at double speed? I've never heard that, actually. Really? Yeah. They're out there. If, really? you're, if you're out there listening to Gab Street and you haven't told him that you're listening at double speed, give this man a shout out and tell him how good he sounds at double speed. I know people are listening to me at double speed. I've got friends that tell me, and I can only imagine how – because I already talk quickly. Hmm. I could only imagine how fast it sounds at double <laughs> speed. We've gone down the whole Gab Street route. The next route I wanted to take is actually on our hometown of Columbus or the greater Ohio. Why is this the place to be? So the, the question I'm going to direct to you is, it, I'm going to prep the audience. Off camera, Gabe told me, hey, I've got a very... Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. <laughs> wow. Corey told me. What was it exactly you told me? You said, uh, my, my answer is going to surprise you? Yes. So here's the question. Why is Columbus the place to be? So the, when you sent me the question, it said, uh, why is Columbus the perfect place to be? The perfect place. And like I said, my answer is probably going to surprise you. Uh, it's, it's not. Columbus is not the perfect place to be. Here is what Gab Street is trying to say with regards to Columbus. Columbus is a worthwhile place to be. Columbus you already live here if you're listening to this most likely you don't need to put the resources into moving somewhere else and running away to somewhere that seems cooler in order to have a good time in order to live somewhere with cultural diversity and value and like i said earlier gab street could be in any city mm -hmm. there there could be a gab street style show in every single city in the United States. It's all about appreciating the positives of where you are. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things that dictate really success over American history in general is mobility. 
being able to, I mean, for example, drive to work and back or drive to school and back or just get there somehow. And uh, there are not a lot of people that are able to move somewhere else out of Columbus, out of Ohio, or out of the country even. So it's just so, there are certainly, if you, everybody has different standards for a a good place to be. Mm -hmm. For me, Columbus Mm -hmm. is the perfect place to be Mm -hmm. for my personal standards. Right. This is a good place to build something great and to have supportive people around it and not feel isolated. This is a perfect place for that. And this is a great place. This is for me, this is a very grounding place. I go to, when I go on vacation anywhere, I tend to go places with mountains. And then there I'm just gawking at the world around me and it makes me feel small and everyone needs to feel small sometimes. But when I come back to Columbus, you feel the same size as Columbus. You feel like you are, you can be part of it. Interesting. Interesting. So you don't feel that Columbus is the perfect place to be right now? I do not. Not by everyone's standards, for sure. But by your standards, Mr. Corey, is it the perfect place? For what I'm trying to do, yes. Okay, tell me more. Why Why is it the perfect place for what you're trying to do? So the culture here is extremely welcoming. And one reason why that is, is because when you think of Columbus, Ohio, if you're from another state, that isn't in the same caliber as... Los Angeles and New York, where you go there to compete with everyone else and come out on top. So there, there's already a lack of that competitive idea when you come to this city. There's no reason to push anyone down because that's not what you're here to do. And I don't think, I don't know of very many people that do come here to succeed because they came here specifically. They ended up here by another circumstance or they were born and raised here Hmm. and they made do with what they had. Interesting. Super interesting. Because I feel like this is perfect. Running a tech company, thinking I've lived in Amazon. I've lived in Seattle when Hmm. I worked at Amazon. I knew what it was like to pay two and a half thousand dollars a month rent for a single bedroom studio, which was like 10 minutes away from where I worked. But it was beautiful there, and I agree with you that nobody appreciates it because in Seattle, the entire city is integrated with nature. You have green spaces throughout the city. It's beautiful. You're right on the Pacific Ocean. Mm-hmm. You've got Olympic National Park that you can view from the ferry. and you Amazing culture. But everybody there still looks elsewhere. Everybody's still looking and seeing how green the grass is elsewhere. And I was looking around, and I was like, Seattle is perfect. You've got <laughs> tech. You've got nature. You've got mountains. You've got national parks. It's all right here. But nobody appreciates it. We're all looking somewhere else. And I, th- I think that's what gave me the knowledge to come back here and be like, bro, I'm paying like now I'm paying the exact same amount, two and a half thousand dollars a month. But instead of just getting a single bedroom apartment, I have a whole house with a backyard in a garage. Like my rent stretches me significantly further here in Columbus than it does in Seattle. And like for me, that's a major upside. Mm-hmm. We've got this entrepreneurial community. We've got the startup community. We've got these musicians, which are hot. We've got like so many things that are going for us. And in any sort of national chart comparing the top cities in the world, Columbus is starting to make some of them. Mm -hmm. Columbus is starting to get on charts. So like for me, I love what you said about it's a great place to build something great. I'm here now to try to make this city great. Mm -hmm. There are more musicians in Columbus, Ohio on Amazon Alexa than any other city in the world. We have a lot of podcasts too, but podcasts were an early adopter of voice technology So a lot of podcasts have shifted over onto Alexa flash briefings Hmm. because flash briefings were a great case for audio content in this hypothesis that you have of how important the audio is. I agree with you. I think Columbus is a great place to be. In my vision of how I'm playing forward, I will take a month, like before the coronavirus came, Hmm. we were expecting to take a month trip as a team to South Korea Hmm. because that's the capital of Samsung, which is Bixby because we've been wanting to do that. But then come back, go out for a month, take what we've done, do a research trip out there, get to experience it, but then come back to our home and bring all the lessons that we brought back home. I know you're, you're 19, you've still got a long time to think about it, 
but you're also a business owner and a podcast host, and I can tell that you're a goal-oriented man. In your vision of how Corey's, Corey's life goes, are you thinking uh, grow your community here and then shift into a different part of the world where you kind of establish roots somewhere else? Or are you thinking more of kind of what I was saying of like experiences going out, but always coming back and making this kind of the long-term anchor where you will always come back? I definitely see this as a long-term anchor, for sure. Yeah, if I'm going to go somewhere else, I'm definitely coming back each time. Let's move on to who are the culture drivers that you've been seeing in Columbus. We mentioned Joseph Keith. We've mentioned Dollar Sign Asia. You're obviously collaborating with cool people like Sam Rothstein. Shout out Sam Rothstein Music, Dollar Sign Asia, everybody. You're interacting with a lot of the cool culture leaders. Being on this podcast of Voice First with listeners, not our biggest listener base for Voice First is Mountain View, California. Anchor gives demographic reports, as you know, so it breaks down the exact location. The highest listener base for Your Voice First podcast is the headquarters of Google in Mountain View, California, in Tesla, and some of the biggest tech companies. Way more listeners out there. But what I'm sharing with them and putting in their head is how cool and how many cool people are here in Columbus, Ohio. I'm curious of your views on who are those culture drivers? Who are the people that the rest of the world needs to start to be aware of? Or if we're here in Ohio, who are the people that we need to start putting our energy into to lift them up so that they can drive our city into the future. There are two categories of people that energy needs to be put into, for sure. Uh, The first category uh, is people that are creating things out of thin air, it seems, such as... magicians. Exactly. Such as Sam Rothstein, as we mentioned, such as Joseph Keith, such as people like Josh Miller and Cole Baker, who throw together two-by-two hip-hop fests, Um, such as people like Adam Himmel, who I interviewed for the release this week, uh, which is March 11th. Um, He throws together a lot of stuff in Old North, uh, particularly Little Flea 614, uh, just bringing people, the people that bring people together. Mm -hmm. And then the second category of people that don't seem to be as focused on, but need to be, are the people that are the best to have as fans of anything. There are a few people I will note here that just siphon, siphon, they, they, what's the word I'm looking for? They funnel so much positive energy into anything that they enjoy, and they are not afraid to say that they like things. It can be a little, it's it's a little nerve wracking to say that you like something sometimes. Mm -hmm. You're afraid of being seen as something that you don't want to be seen as if it doesn't put in a box exactly you don't want to be put in a box and these people are not afraid of that uh the first couple that come off the top of my mind are alex johnson from uh revolter pictures he is one of the biggest supporters of things that he likes i've seen uh he just puts a lot of positive energy into things um interesting and as well as YC, Young Columbus, uh, he is a, per- a performer in Columbus, makes dope music with uh, The Collective. The Collective includes Adam Corwin, uh, DJ Harbinger, uh, King Bali, all those people. And YC has consistently been one of the best fans to have of anything. He creates his own stuff for sure, he, he makes the moves, but at the same time, if he's at your show, that show instantly jumped in energy by like six times, <laughs> at least. And that's Young... Young Columbus or YC. Young YC. Yes. Y underscore Columbus on Instagram. Almost like the promoters. It's almost sounding like uh, we've got magicians and promoters. Yes. If I can rename them. Sure. In the two buckets, magicians and promoters. The magicians are the ones conducting things out of thin air, and then the promoters are the ones saying, guys, do you see this guy making some cool things out of thin air? But let's make an important distinction as well. uh, The word promoter can also be used for someone who likes to get money and then promote it out of financial reasons Mm -hmm. because they were paid by someone. They may not necessarily believe in what they're actually promoting. Mm -hmm. These people are also promoters, but they do it out of the love. They do it out of the appreciation because they already have that energy. So I think that is an important distinction to make. Agreed. I don't have another word for them, <laughs> but uh, 
Yeah. yeah, this is me putting people into boxes like you were just saying not ah. to. <laughs> <laughs> Let's shift into voice strategy. Sure. Again, on your Voice First podcast, a lot of the people that are listening to this are interested in conversational artificial intelligence. I'm very curious of your perspective because you are one of the top podcasts in Columbus, Ohio. And I think it's important that the people that are driving culture are aware of artificial intelligence because of how important a role it's playing in everything that we're doing from economy to culture to international relationships to fighting a coronavirus artificial intelligence is ingrained into every single person's daily life and if you disagree um i'm gonna ask which platform you're listening to this on right now and i'm <laughs> gonna tell you that there's artificial intelligence powering that platform wherever you're listening to us you distribute using anchor which is a great artificial intelligent tool which was bought by spotify which is an artificial intelligence company the only thing that we're missing is Amazon Alexa, hmm. something that people generally visualize as artificial intelligence. So the question, what is Gab Street's 2020 voice strategy is the overarching question. But I guess to break that down into something more m manageable, is the Gab Street pod where is the Gab Street podcast distributed right now? So at the moment, we are on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, Google Podcasts. There are several smaller platforms like uh, Pocket Casts, mm -hmm. uh, trying to think of some other ones we're on youtube as well mm -hmm. we, we are we do have that visual component on youtube um everywhere that anchor puts us so shouts out anchor yes anchor is fantastic um i switched from podbean podbean charges 14 dollars a month and you get less <laughs> than anchor <laughs> which so, is free <laughs> yeah. and pays you yeah Anchor is is free, and the sponsorship system on there is pretty cool. I have not utilized their sponsorship system, but I can see its benefit to a lot of people. So, based off of how I've seen you doing your sponsorships, it it seems like you're going to be making more money than Anchor will be. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're taking out the middleman. Yeah, you're taking out the middleman. Pretty much. Is there a reason you're not on Amazon Alexa yet? Why is the Gab Street podcast not on Alexa? Actually, before you answer that, we have an Alexa sitting in this room and she's listening each time I say her name. Let me see what happens if I say play the, have you ever tried saying play the latest episode? It's been a long time. Give it a, what, do you know how to give it a shot? Uh, it's just Alexa, you just say the name, right? Play the latest episode of the Gab Street podcast. You want to try again? Alexa, play the latest episode of Gab Street Podcast. Oh, nope. Gas. Gas. <laughs> That's Gas Street. Alexa, stop. Nope. <laughs> Interesting. So... I didn't even know Apple Podcasts was on Alexa, so you just taught me something new while also hacking all of the listeners' devices. <laughs> you're welcome. Nice. Hope you're not listening on speakers. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Why aren't you guys on Alexa yet? Uh, from that, total on from a place of curiosity. That option had not presented itself to us uh, saliently. Um, I had never seen it. I had no idea that I could. Um, a lot of other platforms that we had, they just have a button that says, here, submit your RSS feed. And I never saw anything like that. And and they're not integrated into Anchor or anything like that. So obviously when you're trying to build something, most of the time you're gonna take the path of least resistance. That's the easiest time. Mm -hmm. uh, and Amazon was not included in the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. So that is, that is the accurate reason why. <laughs> Do you see Amazon Alexa's um, as an increasing platform with more attention coming to it. Like Spotify has a lot of attention on it. Before Spotify, Apple Pop Music had a lot of attention on it. Facebook has a lot of attention. Instagram, when it came about, everyone was like, there's no attention there. And then the people that were on it grew up and now all of the attention's on Instagram. And those same people are saying, TikTok's for five-year-olds, there's no attention there. Those five-year-olds grow up and now all of the attention is on TikTok. Do you see Amazon Alexa as a platform which is growing in terms of attention, plateauing or decreasing? From my layperson's perspective, it doesn't seem like it is growing. 
right now. But then again, I am not tapped into the news regarding Amazon Alexa. So it could totally be growing, <laughs> and I have no idea statistically, but it is not present in my personal life pretty much in any way. Do you have any Alexa devices? I do not. We used to, and we don't use it anymore. Why? We moved, and we didn't set it up. <laughs> Perfect reason. <laughs> Perfect reason. What about Google Assistant? You guys, Amazon Alexa only? Um, if I use Google, it's if I use the assistant, it's through my phone. We don't have like a dedicated voice uh, apparatus. <laughs> what about Bixby? The, you have a Samsung, right? Yes. What happened to Bixby? I have the Bixby button, and I disabled it because it's the button is in a, in a very awkward spot. <laughs> <laughs> Bixby, if you're listening to this, I'm out here trying and. I think it's just going to take more time and more uh, more people. We're getting there, Bixby. Now, yeah. however, however, I would be 100% open to being included on all of these platforms. Now, after hearing what I just said about them, they're probably not super open to that. But <laughs> Alexa is just as simple as uh, iTunes. Yeah. Sounds like the pipes are doing some background. You go onto their website, you click, I want to set up a podcast, enter in your RSS feed, which Anchor provides for you. Hmm. You type in an intro message that Alexa says for our... <laughs> Alexa, what's in the news? Oh, it was so quiet. So this is ours. There's an intro to it that you type in and it for ours it's for the latest news from Amazon Alexa and Google Assistant. Here's your voice first. So you type that out and it does the little intro. Um, you type in the RSS feed, you upload an image of your podcast, which that's super outdated. I need to update that. Uh, and then you hit deploy and then it goes to the Alexa skill store. Alexa, stop. It, with 614 startups, we got them set up l less than 15 minutes. Okay. Like, if you did this when we were off the po off air, it would take you no time whatsoever. And I would be totally fine with helping you get that set up because I, th I think more people just need to have it as a distribution channel. And then every time you add a new episode onto your Anchor RSS, it'll automatically update on there. The only difference is you've now made it more accessible to another community. And how are people... Cr I was surprised that your podcast didn't get launched there when you said it, because I thought it would have pulled it up on Spotify, but for some reason it didn't. Right now, how do people, can you describe the process when people want to find your podcast? So you're talking to someone at a party and you start mentioning Gab Street and they're like, oh, I want to get connected. How do they go then and, and get on the Gab Street podcast while you're talking to them at the party? So I have physical business cards with QR code on them with me. Okay. That has been the best way in person. Um, the best way to get people digitally to listen to it is through the link tree that is in the bio on our Instagram. Instagram has been our primary promotional source, so that tends to work. And then all of our platforms are listed there. And you use QR codes. Yes. Which is also a relatively new technology. I like that idea. Now, when people scan the QR code, do they go to your link tree? Do they go to your Spotify? Where does the QR code redirect them to? The QR code goes directly to the link tree. So Okay. Okay. So you then get to select whatever podcast streaming platform you'd like. Yes. So here is the card. It has the logo and everything, everything you need to know. And then on the back there, it has the QR code directly to the link tree, as well as some of the platforms that we are available on. These are sweet. I like the feel of these business cards Thank along you. with the QR code. And I like how you list it. I would love to see Amazon Alexa and Google assistant listed on there, but that's my dream. <laughs> 2020 voice strategy. A lot of podcasters get started and they, we were just down in Chattanooga, Tennessee, and they were having so many breakout sessions on flash briefings. Hmm. Are you aware of flash briefing? I'm not. 
Quick lesson for everybody that's not already aware, a flash briefing is what people call a podcast on Amazon Alexa. On Alexa, you can create two types of third-party apps. Well, three. I'm going to say the third first because I really don't care for it. Um, smart home integration. If you're a hardware manufacturer, go somewhere else because this is not the podcast for you. Um, but that is a great one, and IoT is the future. The two that we're going to talk about are flash briefings, which are for podcasts, and Alexa skills, which are like apps for Amazon Alexa. Now, all the musicians that work with us on Alexa for Musicians, they have skills. They have fully fleshed out applications. You can have one-in-one -one back and forth conversations with. Shout out October Jones. Shout out October Jones. Shout out Dollar Sign Asia. Shout out Ladies Love Lonnie. Shout out the almost 50 musicians from Ohio that are on that platform. You guys are pioneering the future of music. Yeah. 614 Startups. Awesome podcast. They just dropped some new content today. Go check it out. Theirs is a flash brief. You subscribe to it once. And then every time someone says good morning, what's in the news, there's a series of phrases that you can say. It'll play through. Okay, here's your news. Me, I subscribe to a lot of tech. So I get Wired, Wall Street Journal, um, Forbes Tech, TechCrunch, Gizmodo, all those tech magazines. But they, they read it every morning. Once I've subscribed, I'm subscribed. Not many people know how to subscribe, let alone how to unsubscribe. Hmm. It's easy enough to subscribe. You walk into anybody's house with an Amazon Echo and you say, Alexa, enable voice first. Okay. Hmm. Alexa, stop. Once you do that, they have subscribed to the Gab Street podcast. And every day when they wake up and they roll over and they say, hey, Alexa, good morning. It'll play your podcast in the queue every day. And if they're like, hey, I'm tired of this Gab Street thing. I want to unsubscribe. I'm not going to talk about it here, but the unsubscribe process is longer than that subscribe process. And most people won't do it. So if you're, it, it's another platform to get subscribers on. Um, I'm realizing that I've been talking for a while, so I'm curious to shift the conversation back to you to hear. I actually have a question for yes, you. Yes, please. If you don't mind. Yeah. This, is, this is both Gab Street and your voice first, so flip it back. How do you see analytics through that platform? They have a whole analytics dashboard for you. Okay. In terms of Anchor, hmm. the data shows up in the other category. Okay. I see. So all of that just shows up in other. Same with every all of the data that you that you give. Um, Good but they give, us, they give us data in terms of daily users, most of the stuff that you get on Anchor, same on Alexa. I would say the data that they give you on Anchor is presented better than the data they give you on Alexa right now. Okay. It's definitely a new platform and um, it's artificial intelligence. I don't know. What, I, I, what are your thoughts on artificial intelligence? Have Do you consider it much? 19-year-old uh, podcast and business owner out of Columbus, Ohio, shaping the culture here in Ohio. Do you have any thoughts around artificial intelligence? Is it a part much of what you're thinking on a daily basis? Does it, does it ever cross your mind? It doesn't cross my mind actively very much, but here's a fact about me. I'm an avid Joe Rogan listener, and whenever AI is brought up on Joe Rogan or by, say, Elon Musk, um, it is brought up with a little bit of fear, a little bit of scorn, uh, with regards to how it can develop in the future on its own. I personally am not too concerned about that. Uh, I think that maybe the scientists are a little, uh, little, little full of themselves and thinking they can create something like that. Uh, <laughs> I don't think we're going to create, be creating um, a world destruction machine through a, uh, a little ball that listens to what you say. And, and speaks with you. I don't think the most that it could do is psychological damage, and that is going to take a long time uh, as Cleverbot is not even to a place of passing the Turing test yet. So those are my thoughts on AI. So you're not super scared right now? No, I'm not too concerned. My general thought is coming from a place of fear is never helpful. Always want to come from a place of love. Mm -hmm. There's a lot, there is a lot to be cautious of when it comes to AI, but fearful... I'm not sure that that's the right term to be associating. When we use fear, we start creating these thoughts of Terminator-like robots. Exactly. 
But at the end of the day, AI is going to look much more like what we have now with Amazon Alexa and kind of these, I doubt that we will ever get a humanoid AI that is what some people are trying to create. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make logical sense to me. There's a lot. If we are stuck to this rigid construct that intelligence looks like us, mm. that's that's super biased. That is <laughs> like there's ageist, there's sexist, there's racist. That's humanist. That is <laughs> that is us thinking that humans are perfect and any other type of intelligence is not valuable whatsoever. And it's going to cause us a lot of downfall when we start to realize how China is encapsulating artificial intelligence right now. And they're beating us. A whole different conversation. Uh, <laughs> artificial intelligence is powering the future. And we need culture leaders to be aware of how they're using it so that they can be more proactive about including it when they want to. So that the futures that Elon Musk and Joe Rogan are thinking of in terms of fear don't happen. As long as people are mindful and they're aware of where it's happening, we won't get to those terminator-like robots that are killing us and taking over the world if if the culture leaders just say i don't think about ai and it's not on my mind that's when we'll start to get down those paths when we don't question and actively think about it we need the business owners and the leaders of culture to start understanding you are dealing with artificial intelligence every single day knowing that what tools do you want to use that are powered by ai to create the outcomes that you're trying to do of appreciating the positives of where you are hmm. because that's such a good mission and you're leveraging so many tools but to say um to say i don't think about it i think it's going to be less and less viable to say that as places like china where they are adopting it so quickly are going to continue to rise to prominence in global culture the people who are leveraging artificial intelligence and are conscious of it are going to start to shift their place um other voice strategy though you guys run a podcast hmm. that in and of itself is a whole voice strategy. Like some voice voice companies exist solely to bring up podcasts. What is your guys's podcast goals for 2020? That's another part of voice strategy is your just podcast goals. So what are the goals of Gab Street's podcast going through 2020? Well, um, part of that, part of the goals of the show, first of all, is that we are booked interview wise uh, all the way out through October. <laughs> um, so currently, congrats, thank you. Um, at the moment, the goal is to get through those so that we have a solid bank of cultural information about Columbus that people can go back and look through and understand that these people are cool and are providing cultural value. Um, so we're, we're only at the beginning. We're a year in, um, we're interviewing a lot of cool people this year. And in my mind, it feels like I've already interviewed them, but I need to understand that I, they're only booked and most people don't know. In fact, me and like two other people know the full schedule of who's going to be on the show. So that needs to happen first. The consistency needs to be there before and the consistency is already there. I need to continue that consistency and never miss a week. And after in 2021 is when the real goals are going to develop when higher goals than that are going to develop. But I need, again, I need to develop that diving board first. That's what I'm doing right now. I think you're right. The consistency is very important when it comes to any content, especially when it comes to voice strategy and understanding this audio strategy. Um, the consistency of it is super important. Hey, Asir, the what's your guys' consistency like? What is what is your schedule when it comes to creating and then distributing the content? Is it a voice first is every single day, Monday to Friday, we drop an episode of the podcast at 5.30 in the morning. I noticed that. Um, Impressive. What, what's your guys' – it's an ancillary thing for you. You guys have a whole production around it. I think it makes a lot of sense for you guys – how often are you guys doing it? I think like once or twice a week. We release it once a week on uh, Wednesday mornings. Wednesday mornings. I think that's great because what we're doing, it can be overwhelming in terms of content. I am building for people to consume every day in a flash briefing. I want them to roll over in bed and I want them to hear a second of it and then jump to the next one. Hmm. Like that's my goal with it. Your guys' goal is to have it be a once a week. Um, do you ever envision in what part of people's day they're, they're listening to Gab Street? Uh, I've usually been told it's that it's in their uh, commute. In the commute. Commute, working on things that 
don't need 100% focus, you know, general physical tasks, as well as um, those are the two biggest examples mm-hmm. I can think of. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, a commute, they'll check into your podcast. They'll probably, on the other days of the week, they'll cycle through their other podcasts, whether that's like Entrepreneurs on Fire, Tim Ferriss Show, Hidden Brain, like so many other podcasts. And then when they check back next week, hey, here's another episode of Gab Street. They listen to that episode. Next day, they jump on to other things. Giving them once a week. Is there, what is your mindset around once a week versus every day? I think you're right on with once a week. So I'm asking this out of genuine curiosity. Um, what are your thoughts on the once a week versus once a day? So I like, personally, when I listen to podcasts myself, again, I have a Joe Rogan listener. Joe Rogan has a lot of episodes that are three and four hours long. Shouts out, Joe Rogan. You kill us. <laughs> I will sit there and listen to the whole thing. I will start an episode. I will listen through it all the way. Uh, I have a very long attention span. I will also be doing some other things, but I will be processing a lot of what's happening. Um, another podcast, H3 Podcast. I'm a big fan of them, Ethan Klein, Ethan and Hila Klein. Um, they do around an hour and a half to two hours. I sit there and listen to the whole thing every mm-hmm. time it comes out. They do twice a week. Joe Rogan kind of fluctuates with how often he does it. Um, so f- I kind of, I make the show for the people with the long attention spans. Um, so I only have time in my schedule to listen to those three and four hour or one and a half to two hour podcasts once a week when they come out or once or twice a week when they come out. I'm following the same mold that I do basically. Um, and I don't want to go in. I don't want to change from long form. If I were to do a daily thing, uh, I would have to condense a lot. And if you couldn't, if you have listened through to this point of the podcast, you know I am very verbose. So um, to condense things linguistically in a show would make me very uncomfortable <laughs> to do. That would be a little difficult. I have to rein it in a lot. You're watching the Kings, the Joe Rogans. Mm. You see how they're doing it. And you say, well, they're successful. I'm going to follow what they're doing. Not only is it due to what they're doing to be successful, it's what they're doing that is successful with me. I'm not really looking at, I should be, but I'm not really looking at right now how everyone else is is consuming that content based on how I consume it. Other people like me will like my show because I'm doing it in the same format. It's working for me. You're not trying to build this for some abstract created person. You're saying, this is how I consume content. I know how I consume content. So I'm going to produce it expecting that other people that there are other people out there like me. Mm -hmm. And if there aren't, you know, I'm not looking for astronomical growth. If this show never reaches past, I don't know, let's say 500 listens in a, in a, in a week for each episode as they come out. I'm not really too concerned with that because the people that are listening so far, the people that have been listening to the show are so dedicated to not only sh- the show, but the movement and they come out to the events and they're there and they, and I interact with the people that listen to this show. I don't want a base of viewers and fans. That's 2 million people and they're scattered around the world. And I don't interact with any of them. Mm then they're just this it's just part of their it, it, it it's not as important there's not as much focus interesting so i'd have I'd, I'd rather have less people that are more focused i love what you're saying about the focus because so many people in flash briefings are saying we are moving in their people have less attention spans super short attention spans your flash briefing needs to be no more than three minutes because nobody can focus for more than three minutes and they're going to get bored of your content and leave untrue you're on this opposite end of the spectrum where you say, no, people have attention spans and they're waiting for content to fill that, to give them an opportunity to practice that long attention span. We need to start believing in the people that were around. If we keep saying things like, oh, the American public is stupid, or if we say most people can't pay attention for more than three minutes, guess what? They can't when you keep saying that because that gets into their minds when they hear it and they begin to believe that. And the power of just 
encouraging and believing in anyone. It's not going to solve somebody all of somebody's problems if you say like, hey, hang in there, champ, you're doing great. But if you just stop insulting everyone, you know what I mean? It just, it doesn't do anything. It might do something for your viewer base, your numbers, to say something negative about people. Um, sure, great, you're getting better ratings, whatever. You might be making more money. But this is th doing this show is so fulfilling for me because I'm able to stay positive and I'm able to keep that positive energy moving. And everyone that's involved so far has come along with me and sometimes it has changed the way that they process the world from a negative viewpoint to a positive viewpoint. So that's what I'm here to do. And it's also, as we might touch on soon, part of my professional career that I plan on going into. So I'm currently in college for uh, therapy, uh, well, psychology at the moment, and then moving on to more specialized education. I plan on being a therapist, uh, hopefully with a private practice and such. Tell and me more about this. How, how is the podcast how do you see the podcast helping you develop into this therapist that you want to become? Have you seen um, any alignment between podcast and where you're trying to head in terms of therapy? Well, first of all, let's say you go into a therapist's office mm -hmm. and you're telling the therapist your problems and they have to uh, have you refresh them every five seconds or every five minutes or so uh, because they lost track and they are not paying attention very well. Um, that would suck, wouldn't it? You're like, oh, you're not listening to me. I'm not important That's to you where whatsoever. My, yep. So w first of all, this experience with podcasting and recording an, an interview with people that I genuinely respect and people that I may not have known before I did the interview as well is just practicing that focus and that giving respect in the moment. Because nothing is like feeling like you're heard and feeling like you're appreciated and respected in order to make you feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. Because I, a lot of times before I start the show, I'll go, hey, this is the place to plug. This is the, the place to be, to, to show off. This is, this is the place to be kind of narcissistic. You know, I need you to do that. I need you to believe in yourself, even if you don't mm -hmm. for an hour and a half, two hours. And uh, usually they start off a little like eh, I don't want to I don't want to like say I'm great or anything you know I, I'm not doing anything cool and I'm like well okay you're here to do that you are great you're here for a reason you know and that I don't say that they end up picking up on that as they go on I don't have to say anything like that they start to as I'm asking questions get into that mindset of bragging a little bit more because we all could use a little bragging you know what i mean we all need a cheerleader we all need someone out there helping us and hyping us i'm very intrigued by this concept of giving people this longer form content i'm with you i don't chop my content up i i keep it as however long we do it we'll have musicians for me long content is like 30 minutes of a musician and i'm always thinking that is nobody's gonna listen to the full 30 minutes how long is an episode of Gab Street? Usually an hour and a half. An hour and a half or two hours long. Do we have any data in Anchor that shows how long people stay into an episode? Not in Anchor, but in YouTube. Interesting. How have you seen that data in YouTube? How have you seen, if you're open to talking about it, how have you seen that data reflect people's attention spans? So generally, I'm happy if I get somebody tuning in for 10 to 15 minutes of an episode. Mm -hmm. I'm cool with that. Different people will listen to different clips over time. And they'll see, and a lot of the times it'll be someone that's already a fan of them too. So, and that'll enable them, them to listen longer as well. But um, that has also been growing over time in uh, the retention of attention over the episodes. You've, you've seen that attention growing? Yes. I'm very curious if you've been helping to strengthen that muscle for people. If the fact that you're putting out content that's that long consistently has allowed people to strengthen that muscle. Do you have any thoughts around growing people's attention? Is that is that a goal of yours? 
I would like to. Yeah. I think everybody could benefit from a longer attention span. And I think there is value in starting from where you are and not where you want to be Mm -hmm. in that, yes, there are people with short attention spans. It's not everyone, but these people exist. There also needs to be content for them, but at the same time, long form content should be there to help them exercise that. You bring very good energy onto the show. I'm trying to think if there's anything that we've missed before giving you a chance to plug in all the Gab Street. Hmm. You think anything? I don't think so. I think we're right. For people who don't already know and aren't already connected with Gab Street, what's the best way for people to start following along with Gab Street and uh, get connected with you? Follow us on Instagram at Gab Street Podcast. All that, everything spelled out. If you would like to book an interview with us, if you'd like to sponsor us, our email is gabstpodcast at gmail.com. Always feel free to hit us up there. Hit us up in the DM. Always open. Um, we'll be getting a website soon. And follow, find us on YouTube. But the best way to find all the platforms that you listen to uh, podcasts through is to find the link tree in our Instagram bio. Uh, that has our Spotify, our YouTube, our Google Podcast, our Apple Music. Uh, that also has all of the other things you need to know, such as our mailing list, where you receive, ahead of everyone else, uh, the next two guests uh, that will be on the show uh, through that email list. Yeah. So, Early access to content. Exactly. And if you support us on Patreon, you do get access to episodes before they release. So that's also a benefit. Corey, it's been wonderful having you on the show. It's Thank been you for having me. Wonderful getting to collaborate with an energy like yours. As you as well. Thank you. Do you have any final words to send people off with? Any final thoughts or intentions you want to put out for our listeners in Mountain View, California, or Gab Street listeners? No matter where you are, and is it Mountain View? Mountain View? Mountain is that View. It? Mountain View. Uh, there's cool stuff happening where you are too. Start your own Gab Street. You just have a Mountain View podcast. That would be wonderful. And if you do, send it to me. I want to learn about what's going on there. For real. So always try and appreciate where you already are. I think that's the best thing to do for your mental health and for the people around you.